Well, good afternoon from Missoula, Montana. The weather's changed. We're heading into winter. We've had a lot of rain and snow this week, but it's warmer today. So we're going to take advantage of that to work on the project of putting some recovery gear on an attachment on the back of the spare tire. And as you can see, our packages have arrived. So in a minute, we're going to go to unboxing, unwrapping and discussing what we're going to do with this stuff and get it all assembled to put it on that thing right there. You'll also notice one last little thing. I still have my temporary tags. Montana ran out of aluminum for license plates. Can you believe that? So we got to live with temporary tags for a little while longer. Crazy times we live in. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Well, welcome to my project of building a recovery tools rack to put on the rear spare tire of the Bronco. I was inspired by this photo I found on the internet of a Jeep. Uh, and in fact, initially I really liked it so much I thought about mocking up and having built uh, here at my local job shop uh, a metal rack just like the one shown in this picture. But as I got to thinking about it, and as I took some feedback from some of you about concerns about the weight carrying capacity of that tailgate on the Bronco, I thought there might be a better way, at least to uh, kind of start out and, and check out what we're going to do. So today we're going to talk about that better way. And the better way for this project ran me $300 plus the cost of the recovery tools. So for 300 bucks, let's figure out what we can do. So the first thing I decided to do was purchase this Smittybilt iRack 2. You can see that this rack here is held on by straps that go around the spare tire and then it is secured and those are kind of excellent for molly attachments right there. And it wasn't very expensive. This I purchased from eBay from this seller, uh, $125. In fact, I think when I bought it there was a coupon involved. I think I got it for a little less than that. but. We're going to count it as $125. So that's part number one. Part number two, I purchased two of these. These are um, mounts that uh, can hold an, a, a shovel, uh, an axe, a pick, etc. I bought two because I have three accessories, a shovel, a pick, and an axe that I wanted to attach. I now have four accessories. I actually have a, a foldable camp stove that I'm going to add in... Um, into the fourth slot on these. And you can see one advantage to these is there's a locking hasp here in the middle so we can prevent theft of our tools. The next thing that I needed was a high lift jack mounting system. So I purchased this one from Amazon. Uh, I got it for about $50. That's an excellent one. And you'll see how I utilize this. It's designed to go around a tube, uh, but I found a very simple hack uh, on this system to make that work. The next thing that we are going to need is a high lift jack handle uh, holding um, keeper, handle keeper. I liked this one of all the ones that I saw. I thought it was a pretty slick one. It also has, uh, if we click right there, um, it has a lockable thing to kind of lock those two things in place. Then I purchased a neoprene boot to protect the mechanism of the high lift jack. And then we purchased a high lift jack. I bought a 48 inch high lift jack. Uh, I didn't want anything taller than that just for uh, concerns, especially about swinging open the tailgate and the possibility of the foot of the jack hitting the side of the, of the truck. Purchased this very nice Fisker's ax. Purchased this Fisker's shovel. Purchased this Fisker's pick. And finally, for accessories like flashlights, etc., and even uh, it was a thought uh, that I might use these to hold some of the tools onto that rack with this Molly Bolt kit. Very handy little box. Bought a couple of these. In here, we have the Smitty Built recovery. I'm sorry, the Smitty Built rack that's going to go on the tire. Here we have our high lift jack. I think what we've got in this box is a shovel and an axe. I'm still waiting for the, um, the pick. 
I want to do a pick as well. It's on back order. So we're going to mock this up without the pick for now. And then I've got some various accessories to mount these things, different ideas, some of which may or may not apply to this. As you can see, Amazon and UPS did a good job of already unboxing my, my high lift jack, so this one shouldn't take too long at all. What we have here is we have a 48 inch high lift jack. It's like Christmas time. Okay. Got a hatchet. We'll get to that in just a second. We've got a shovel. That looks to be about it. Now, this thing is <laughs> covered in bubble tape. That's really funny. Let me undo this. I just said. Uh, bought a baking pan for my kitchen from Amazon the other day and it arrived without any protective covering at all. They threw it in a cardboard box and sent it out the door. And this durable off-road recovery shovel is wrapped up better than, a, than if every airbag in my car went off. It's covered in a, in a nice beautiful protective cloth. It's not going to stay this clean for long, but for now, there you go. So we've got a Fisker's heavy duty shovel with the big wide handle. I bought the extra heavy duty model on purpose, the good welding along the top. This allows this shovel to really be heavily leaned into. You can see it's welded here, it's welded to this top. This is a good, solid working shovel for recovery purposes. So I'm excited by that Fisker's shovel. Right down there. Then I purchased a Fisker's chopping axe with the protective cover on it, the handle. That'll keep it safe while it's attached. But if we go ahead and see how that handle works real quick here. That's a good question, isn't it? I guess you just do that. There we go. And then the axe comes out. Nice, good, light handle, but uh, rubberized, so we don't have degradation and Wow, that is sharp. That is eating right back into that plastic as I try to put it back into place. Oh, let's be very cautious in using our axe. There we go, slid in there and then locked back in place. So that's going to be fantastic. There's the Fisker's axe to go with our on our attachment. We'll come to this Smitty Built thing in just a minute. Let's take a look and see what we got in here. Now this right here is a boot, a protective neoprene boot to go over the bottom of the high lift jack mechanism to keep it clean while it's traveling outside. Very important. We don't want to get that rusted and, and gummed up. So that's going to be on there. This is a uh, keeper for the high lift jack. This keeps the uh, handle and the shank mounted and fixed while you travel. This is a mounting system that can go on the rack that allows for the uh, shovel and the ax to be bolted in and locked onto that rack. Okay, now this is a high lift jack brand mount for the uh, high lift jack. Okay, with that said, let's take a look at this particular mounting bracket that Smitty Belt puts out. Okay. And throw that on the ground in our package. Got some accessories right here. And this is the important part right here. Now that's pretty heavy duty. I'm going to tell you this thing is heavy duty. That, that, is, that is a lot heavier than I thought it was going to be. That's really going to do the trick here. Now what we have here is a powder coated, this is metal, it's really solid metal, powder co coated around the background here. 
to uh, go ahead and hang the design intention is for that to hang like this on the tire and for those accessories to bend around. Obviously we're going to have to drill a hole with a hole saw in the middle to go around our camera opening right there. But I think this thing is going to do the trick for us. All right, what we need to do is we're going to need to use a hole saw. I've selected a three inch hole saw to put a hole somewhere in here, probably, you know, right in the middle or as close to the middle as possible so that we can accommodate for our backup light that's located right here in the middle of our spare tire. So let's do that real quick. to put it together like this a little bit and what I think we're going to do is we're going to use this high lift jack tube mount for here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this piece of cast iron tubing that I have and put it behind the rack so that the u-clamps of this come through the rack and that this mounts then onto that and it tightens right up like that it's going to work really really well and then we'll be able to have that secured and bolted down that way and then we'll keep working up and find a way to get each of those tools attached. Yeah, I've used a pipe on the back to put these pipe clamps on. I didn't have any modification. They don't quite go through both of the molly holes, but they do sit in nicely on the bottom one to really kind of use that. So, Okay, there's the high lift jack. Look at that. Yeah, that's that is heavy for those that were worried about the weight on the tailgate there is some weight there but that does free up something like that for the hatchet that's going to give us a lot more room to work with and still have that space right there if we put the hatchet down below and the shovel to pick up above or for some combination we'll be able to work around that hole for our backup camera got the equipment holder right there uh, go like that or like this Let's just see how we end up putting it and then the shovel and the pick will go there I'm going to go ahead and take the high lift jack off for right now and get this mounted on the tire and then we'll put the tools on it okay this is a relatively easy attachment you just need to take the spare tire off Okay, now we're ready to cinch that back up and put the tire back on.
Well, I'm running out of daylight, so I've got it 95% done. I'm going to put the tools on. Uh, my issue right now is this adapter. This guy right here, this part that I have this bar in is designed to be right here on the top of this. But that would cause my winch, you know, my ratchet to be, to crawl too close to my brake light. And um, I've already experimented with that. So this is a temporary fix right now to kind of pace that. I obviously have some room to get that back a little further on the tire. Uh, but I need to kind of figure out how to deal with this connection from here to here. I need a shorter one is what I need. Uh, so I'm going to pay, you know, give some thought to that. But in the meantime, it's on there tight. It's, it's not going anywhere. So let's strap the tools up and see what it looks like. That's version one. I don't know. The shovel's a little bit out there. I'll have to think about that. Okay, here we have kind of the first take at the back tire recovery gear. There are a couple of issues here I've talked about already. The first is up here on the top, the strap length from here to here is way too long. So I've looped it back around and I'm using this pole to hold that in a much shorter position because otherwise the strap ratchet pulled itself right up into the brake light. So got to get a custom length here so that I can get that just centered here. And of course it does block the brake light a little bit, but I'll live with that. Okay, we kind of know from the backup camera hole where center needs to be. We got that pretty dialed in. We've got the jack on the bottom, hatchet right above it, then the gap, and then the shovel and the pick. So let's take a look at how this back door opens. You know, I'm not sure I'm in love with how some of this is sitting right now, but you know, it's for, for first pass. So let's go ahead and open this up. Let's open it all the way to the farthest thing, and then that's where it stops. So the way I've got the high lift right now is still about an inch or two inches away from hitting the car when the rear tailgate is fully fully open go ahead and close that well there's the end of today's first pass try at getting my recovery tools onto a bracket or mount on the back of the rear tire on the tailgate and on one hand it's working fine all the tools are there and they're bolted down and they're tight on the other hand, I'm not sure I'm in love yet with how that looks. But long story short, I have a Matic pick, a shovel, a hatchet, well, an axe, and a 48-inch high lift jack all on this back of this tailgate for less than $200. So I think that's a pretty good deal. Look forward to seeing you out on the trail.